years and years ago, we had a beautiful, beautiful chaplain in the community. He was a very holy man. And uh, he, uh, he couldn't say a sentence without in twice saying, Our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Our Lord and Savior. I'll buy Our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, but you can only say it once. And then after that, you've got to be about what it means. So watch the jargon. I, I found myself in a situation where, where actually um, very good people were using very unreal language and wondering why journalists just shook their head when they walked out of the room or wouldn't think of covering a religious conference. Wouldn't think of it. I don't blame them. It's a waste of time. They didn't understand what was being said themselves. So this, this whole... This whole outreach to, to life around us and our own reactions to it. There are things I would not do. I would, I would consider that uh, a, a corruption of a kind of, of simplicity of life that I don't want to be part of. One, quit the jargon. And I know you don't want to call it jargon because it's your holy language. And, uh, and uh, it's, it's your theological language, it's your canonical language, it's your um, mystical language, it's your spiritual language. Forget it. The second thing is start with that person's life, not the life out of which it came 2,000 years ago. They'll get there someday if it's important for them. They'll find it, and you can help them find it. But most of all, what is the great teaching that is missing at this time? There, there, is, a, there is an authentic language which stripped of, of, of all the junk of the culture people recognize and they want to talk about. What is old age? When are you old? Is it a number? Is it, is it physical health? What is age? And does it come at 60 or does it come at 16 for some people? All of that cut through it to, to, the, to the listener's question and, and, and just deal with that question. They'll, they have a path behind them. Uh, their parents have told them something. Their churches have told them something. Their schools have told them something. Make it their question not the guidebook question that you're dealing with. So I guess the third thing is just be who you are and where you are and listen to where your listeners are. I believe that we needed humility right now, and I believe it more every day. Now, I'll tell you very honestly, in the new book, Radical Spirit, I think I'm clear. It is humility that the, that the country is missing, and that individually we have learned to fear. In the United States, humility is not an American thing. And we really believe that humility and humiliations are synonyms. They are not. I can't even turn on a television without being happy I wrote the book. I have no idea if anybody will ever read the book, but that's not important to me. What is important to me is that I got it said. Humility enables me to live in a troubled world with peace of mind and a serene heart. And that is enough. Everybody, uh, these kids are looking for serenity. They are looking for, for development. They are looking, they want to do right. And they want to they wanna know how it is, how they'll know it's right, that kind of thing. Start with them. Uh, don't, don't start with, with a world that makes them yawn. Watch your language. I'm, I'm not talking about slang. I would never use slang. I, I find it disruptive of the human mind and heart, frankly.